Welcome to Spicy Toast Gaming and our Tom Kench guide for Path of Champions. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. We're putting out daily content for Path of Champions, including guides for all of the new champions. Let's get into the video. All right, starting off with a overview, just to give some general information on the champion and whether or not this is someone you probably want to put your time and shards um, into. Now, Tom's actually been in Path of Champions before. He was in the original version. Uh, when they switched to the 2.0 release, he actually wasn't in there. And so it's very interesting to see how he has changed. And I think he's actually changed for the better. I'm very happy to have him back in the game. So first, easy to learn, hard to master. Tom's units are pretty simple, but they added in the second star power, which we'll get into right after this overview, a lot of complexity to his kit. And so it's still, at its base, very simple, very easy to win with, but there is a lot of fun things and more complex things you can do if you want to really get good with Tom Kench. Next we have Natural Sustain. So in his deck, he has Health Pots as well as uh, the Citrus Courier. These are able to heal your units as well as the Nexus. And so having that just built in is very nice and can definitely help, uh, help you just sustain and last throughout these long adventures. Next is Cloning. So part of that hard to master part is Tom Kench is able to clone any units that either you play or the enemy plays. And so being able to play around with that, including cloning champions, theirs or yours, uh, is very fun. But it is the adding a bit of complexity, but again, it's not something you necessarily need to do to succeed. It's just a fun thing you can do with this champion. All right, next we have crazy consistent scaling. So similar to Kane and Garen, uh, Tom is able to give his units 2-2 whenever they fulfill a certain requirement. Uh, for Tom, it's when they take damage. A lot of his units damage themselves when they either spawned or round start. And so they're just able to get these buffs massive throughout the game and very, very quickly. And so even blocking or attacking when you're just taking damage, it helps your units quite a lot and gets them very big, able to just destroy anything in front of them. Lastly, we have excellent removal, and by that it's obliteration. So every round that Tom is on the board at round start, he creates a two mana spell that will capture an enemy unit. Uh, it strikes him first, so again it goes into that scaling where it strikes him so that as long as he survives, he then gets more health and uh, damage but he captures the unit, and then he can obliterate it. And obliteration works very well in Path of Champions. It doesn't actually kill the unit, and so any on-death effects that would normally occur, don't. So there's a lot of adventures in the game where certain things happen when their unit dies. Probably one of the best examples is Tridomir. If you played against a Tridomir boss, what happens is that uh, the first time one of his units would die in a round, and instead fully heals, gets tough, fearsome, and overwhelm. Now normally that's a real pain to deal with, but with Tom, he can just eat those units every single round, and since they're not technically dying, it works out perfectly. So it's a lot of fun you can do, a lot of benefits that kind of only he has with that cloning and obliteration. So he's very strong, and we'll go look at him in-game now and fully explain some of the things that may not have made sense uh, initially in this general overview. All right, in-game now with Tom Kench, the River King. So if you don't know, he is a 4-mana 2-6. When I'm summoned or round start, create a Acquired Taste in hand. Now that Acquired Taste is the 2-mana slow uh, capture. So he will capture a unit, but first it strikes him. So you have to be careful not to uh, grab anything that could kill you. Once he's captured three units, he then obliterates his enemies and releases his allies. So if you capture any of your friendly units with your um, Tom Kench 
Bayou Brunch. Uh, he will put them back on the board, and then any enemies get obliterated, and he levels up. When he levels up, he goes to 3-7, and then he's still making those acquired tastes, but now when he attacks, he obliterates his captured enemies and releases his allies. And then, yes, his champion spell, 3 mana, he captures an ally, and then uh, he gets the stats of that ally. Now, other cards can use this other than Tom Kench. So if you want to put this on one of your other units that you want to buff up that either has Elusive or Overwhelm or something like that, uh, they can also take advantage of this and capture a different friendly unit. The problem if someone else captures them, though, is they don't have that release mechanic, so they will be holding on to them until they die, and then they'll get released automatically, because uh, that's how capture works. All right, looking at the star powers, so the rank one is glutton for punishment. When an ally survives damage, granted 1-1, one, one, which is much better than his previous star powers. Um, I don't, they are just called powers or something in the previous version of Path of Champions. But it used to just be at round end, grant his units um, like two health, I believe. And so you'd have units that would be very, very tanky and wouldn't die, but they would essentially have no attack because their, their attack was never going up. So it made them very defensive, but it really reduced your power of actually attacking the enemy. So now that it actually gives you damage and health is amazing. And ally surviving damage that can trigger many more times than just at round end on his two star which we've been alluded to um, from the beginning is long-term contract plus one starting mana when you capture a unit create a copy of it in hand it costs one less so this is really big so this is every time you're capturing an enemy unit with that acquired taste that he's generating each round you're then able to have a copy of it in hand that you can play. Um, now this will not copy any items that card has. It's just gonna create a basic version of that card that just costs one less. So that's still really good though, and this works even on enemy champions. So they might play their champion and then you immediately swallow it and then you can play it if uh, you want. And then this also works when you capture any ally units. And this works with spells that aren't just his. So if you have any capture spell, it'll work the same way. Um, but this also lets you clone your own units with your Bayou Brunch. So this lets you just have a large more variety of how you want to play the game and gives you a lot more options. So now you can look at the board and decide, do I want to try to clone one of my units, one of the enemy units? Will that help me in this moment? And so it'll really help you shine and get much better uh, with Tom Kench. Now he is still generally pretty easy, but he is now way more complexity than he had before. All right, looking at his starting deck, and if I didn't, if I didn't mention the three star power, it's just when an ally survives damage, grant it 2-2 two, two instead of the 1-1. One, one. So that just helps you get a lot bigger, a lot faster. Looking at your starting deck, you have the Krusty Codger. So play deal two to me, which is actually a positive because now when you play him, he'll be a 3-3 three, three at rank one, and then a 4-4 uh, four, four at rank three with your star powers. The Targon's Brace is actually better than the studded leather or studded armor because uh, you're able to give people buffs more often than just the 1-1 one, one you'd get with the studded uh, armor. His 2-drop is the Boctopus Challenger, deal 3 to me, and it still comes with Spell Shield. These two work very well together, so you can play the Custy Krusty Codger, and then the Boctopus, and then uh, let this unit support the other one and just be able to take enemy units off the board. Uh, they work very well together, and then they also have that built-in scaling because they both damage themselves when you play them. He also starts with the one-cost health potions. So you can heal your ally or your nexus. This is very nice to have. 
Then you also get the Bayou Brunch, giving you that capture. Journey in Sandhopper, pretty good. Just a good stat line, gives you that attune. Now, it is a little sad that this unit doesn't have any sort of damage mechanic. Uh, so normally I'll end up trying to play one of the other ones instead, but it is just a general good card. The Lounging Lizard. This card is pretty amazing, the fact that it's elusive and that it's damaging itself of every round. So it's essentially just scaling, getting more and more powerful every round. And then also getting that Crystal Carrier just to give you some more mana. These can definitely win you games. Um, it's kind of a backup win condition that if you're not drawing Tom Kench, or you just can't get attacks through, having some of these on the board to just avoid the enemy and uh, go straight for the Nexus is very nice. And then just having elusive units in general that are pretty tanky to be able to block. This is very nice to have. There's a lot of champions where you struggle if you don't have any elusive units and then you're going up against one of the decks that has all elusive units and you just never block. So having this just baseline in your deck and just as a three drop uh, will definitely end up winning you games very often. We have the Citrus Courier that uh, goes down to four mana, which is very, very strong. This is an amazing card for healing all of your allies and then rallying. Normally you're able to use this to just win games uh, when you play it. And then the Razor Scale Hunter with Scout and Regenerating. While this is a very good card, it is a bit too expensive and normally it's not strong enough right off the, the gate. By the time you can play this five mana card, some of your cheaper units will already be outscaling it. So it's, it's good, but if you're going to cut a card, I would normally cut this one first. Taking a look at relics now, Tom Kench is able to use a large variety of relics uh, quite well. So right now I'm running the Troll King's Crown. Allies have Overwhelm. It's very nice since your units are scaling up so much, just being able to have that attack go through consistently um, is very nice. Going on, starting off with the commons actually, one of the best one that I don't have unfortunately is War Mog's Armor, giving you regenerating. Uh, with your acquired taste, you're taking damage every round, and you also want to be blocking to take that damage to scale up with the star powers. So regenerating, being able to heal um, at the start of every round, very helpful, keeps you alive uh, I wish I had it, unfortunately I don't. Since we're down here, the Berserker's Buckle. This is by far the best item for Tom Kench, in my opinion. Uh, when I survive damage, grant me 2-2. So it's essentially his rank 3 star power, but an item. And so, having him ranked up plus this, every time he survives any damage, he goes up 4-4. Four, four. Absolutely crazy. If you have one of these, definitely throw it on Tom as soon as you can. Uh, luckily, we are going to get this if you complete the current event path, which is um, Arclight. Uh, so this will be very good once you get that for Tom. Any of the general stat increase ones also would work out okay. Putting Overwhelm on him with a common isn't bad. Uh, Challenger, Chameleon Necklace. You don't want Quick Attack because uh, you want to actually be taking damage when you attack, so you can be scaling more. Uh, so the same with Fearsome wouldn't really be too helpful. But Overwhelm, Challenger, those can be pretty good. Lost Chapter, so that when you play him, you'll immediately have enough mana to play your Acquired Taste, because normally when you're playing him on 4, you don't have enough mana to immediately use your uh, Acquired Taste without it. Spell Shield can be nice. Armadillo Shell is very good if you have this, but not the Warmogs. So this instead of the Regenerating. Uh, that tough really comes in handy a lot. Um, and just that extra health, making sure you can take those blocks, that you can capture those units and have them hit you without you dying. Uh, it's actually, it works out very, very well. This was the first thing I put on him when I unlocked him, and it worked great. One thing I'll say is that um, his star powers, they do work with tough and barrier. 
So even if you take or don't take damage, but you get hit, you'll still go up in scaling. So that's very, very nice. So essentially you can take one damage, which will be nothing because it gets blocked by the tough and you'll still increase in your health. All right, like I mentioned, Troll King's Crown, very good. The General's Counter Plan, so round start creating a fleeting copy of me in hand. Uh, the way that works is that then that copy of you, since you already have a Kench on the board, will then be turned into his champion spell. That champion spell being the Bayou Brunch, where you capture one of your own allies. So that can be very good for swarming the board, because you capture an ally, you get its stats, but then you create a copy of that ally in hand, so you can play it again. And then when he releases the ally, you have it on board again. So if you want to just play a more swarm tactic and have a bunch of allies um, on the board for a lot cheaper, and then also have your units or Tom Kench be way stronger because he's eating all of them, that could be very fun. If you're wanting to do that, I would probably run it with Archangel Staff. Uh, that way you just have more mana to play that every round. Uh, Blade Rack, giving your allies Challenger. Since you want your allies to attack, but you also need them to survive, uh, being able to make sure that they're challenging the right ones that won't kill them uh, can be very handy. So that's another decent item with him. Uh, Luminous Orb, just giving him that plus three health, so making him tankier, and then letting him block elusive units is nice. And that's most of the general relics that I think are uh, pretty good on him. Let me know what you think. There's definitely going to be a lot of different ways to build him. If you've used any that I haven't mentioned that worked out really well, definitely let me know. Uh, but now I'll take a look at some of the uh, powers and cards you want to get in-game with Kench. Looking at the powers for Tom Kench, uh, if you've looked at my other guides, you've definitely seen this uh, before. So Wild Inspiration and Spell Slinger. So Wild Inspiration, your created cards cost one less, and Spell Slinger, your spells cost one less. So normally, Spell Slinger is the better one to get, but with Tom Kench, it's actually Wild Inspiration. So you are having cards that you are generating or spells, but you're also being able to generate cards when you're capturing units, and this will reduce their cost even more. So you can capture a two cost unit, it'll get reduced once by the star power, and then this will reduce it again. So it just helps you if you're wanting to clone units, be able to play them a lot cheaper and just swarm your board with cards. Also, this makes it easier to be able to play your uh, acquired taste, which Tom is generating every single round. This way you don't really feel like you need Archangel Staff necessarily, or too many other um, spell-focused or mana-focused cards. So Wild Inspiration definitely works very well, and is actually better than Spell Slinger, in my opinion, uh, for Tom Kench. Spell Slinger is still pretty good to get, though, if you uh, see it. Moving on to the next group of star powers, so we have Endurance, when an ally survives damage, granted 1-1. One, one. So it's essentially the same thing as Tom's star powers, further incentivizing what you're already trying to do, have your units survive damage, and they scale up. Very good to have, definitely one you always want to pick up if you see it. Uh, next, Vanguard Lookout, Game Start Summon to Vanguard Lookouts. Those lookouts are a 1 attack, 4 health unit giving you good blockers, and then since they have health to block, they normally can scale up when they're taking that damage. So if you have bad luck, you don't have to worry. You know you're going to have two units on the board at the start of the game, even if you have bad luck with draws. Next here we have the best defense. Allies have attack, grow my health to match my power. Now since your units are constantly taking damage, they're usually fairly low on health, but have a large um, health or damage pool, letting them attack so they can scale their health back up. Very nice, definitely helps your scaling, and will just win you games by having units that have massive health pools and damage pools. All right, to finish things off, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the Star Spring. Now you can pick this up um, by itself in shops many times, or if you see Soraka as a support champion, definitely go for it. 
This just gives you a backup win condition. It's very nice to have it healing your allies um, consistently, but then also it's very easy to trigger and you can win games with this uh, without too much difficulty, uh, especially if you get like regenerating, that counts as a heal. So that, if you put that on Tom Kench, you can win games very quickly uh, with this. So if you see this in game, try it out. It will definitely win you games. Thank you so much for watching that video. We're putting out daily content for Path of Champions. So if that interests you, please like, subscribe, hit that notif notification bell, and comment down below. We're just starting out here on YouTube, trying to grow the channel, so any help is greatly appreciated. Thank you, and have a great day.